If you would, you'd be turning your Bible to the book of Matthew, chapter 24. Uh, long chapter, and a lot of good uh, studies have been studied in it, and a lot of good messages have been preached in it. And uh, it's, uh, it gets kind of uh, complicated sometimes in some ways to uh, figure it all out. Now, I, I know I won't ever do it, but uh, with the help of the Lord, I'm going to try to teach a lesson on on uh, Matthew 24 and uh, try to bring out a few points, maybe. Yeah, I'll help to some of you to pray for me. Pray for me. I try to stand here and I try to uh, uh, let the Lord lead me and guide me. What to say? In Matthew, uh, <clears throat> Matthew's Gospel, in verse one, chapter 24, Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple and jesus said unto them see ye not all these things verily i say unto you there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down and as he said on the mount of olives the disciples came unto him privately saying tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world three questions and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am, the, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars, and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for these, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilence and, death, and earthquakes and diverse places all of these are the beginnings of sorrow Amen. and so we see here that there's going to be these things and we're seeing them now uh, uh, with the things that are going on in the world we're seeing signs and uh, I was just thinking yesterday as we was out uh, in the car and seeing the beautiful white fluffy clouds and all this and people deny uh, that there is a God, right? Uh, and uh, through nature, it reveals Amen. to people that God is uh, on the throne because uh, there's no other way that uh, these things could exist. Even the the trees and the sun on its uh, uh, rise and uh, on its setting and the moon and all these things. So it is it is uh, it is a sign that uh, uh, it's it's bearing witness that there is a God. But we want to see here this morning a little bit about what uh, what is taking place here. And I believe that Jesus is talking not only to the Jews here, but he's talking to uh, us as uh, church members this morning. And he's he's telling us that these things are going to happen, and they're going to be uh, they're going to be uh, towards the ending of uh, uh, of the time for uh, uh, for the world to stand. But he says here that uh, these uh, things are going to happen, but he he warns his disciples there, and he's also warning us that to take heed that you be not deceived. Amen. And uh, this is the this is the critical <coughs> point of the whole thing, being deceived by false uh, false prophets and false uh, uh, teachers. So he says here, take heed that no man deceive you, and we have to be very very careful and uh, uh i think that i think that when we hear these things that uh we hear preaching a lot of times in in sermons and uh, uh or hear people just getting up and make statements and things of this nature uh we don't need to swallow it uh, uh right yet i think we, if if you if you ponder on it and uh, get your Bible and study on it, and it will reveal to you what is right and what is wrong. Amen. And here, uh, he, we, we know that uh, even the uh, thing that he told them about that the uh, wouldn't be one stone left upon another, we know that that has already happened. But we won't look here at this uh, again, here and he, as in verse four, when he tells them to take heed and watch, he says, for many shall come in my name. And I, I have often wondered a lot of times about if he were talking about his name or if they were saying that they are the Christ. And I come to conclude that uh, they're, they're the ones, they're the ones that are going to be professing that they are Christ. 
because uh, the Bible speaks about any man coming in in the name of Jesus. And uh, so I don't believe that they're coming in the name of Jesus uh, to, to tell you anything good, but they're coming there to glorify themselves and saying, hey, uh, I am the Messiah. And uh, of course, we know that the Antichrist will set up his, his little deal in the church, in the, in the temple there, and say that he is the Christ. Right. But he says here that many will come and do these things, and, that, and the uh, cunningness of the devil uh, will send his... His workers there, and they're very, they're very sly about how they uh, uh, use the the Bible, and I believe that all of it will be a, a revised version that they will use because the wording has been changed, and uh, this word here uh, it will prevent them from declaring themselves to be the Christ. But the revised versions they can use those, and they can change, and they can twist the message around. A word that they can convince people. Right. And we know this morning that there is people here on this earth that God will never call. We know that there is people that God has never chosen from Amen. the from the uh, halls of eternity. They're just not chosen people, and so they're an empty vessel for the devil, and he can he can spew this out to them, and they will suck it in just like a, a sponge sucking in water, and they will be his his prophets. That will will, will will eagerly go out and and repeat what he has told them, and so these are the false prophets. And we know this morning, uh, as, as we looked in the lesson here, talking about the days being shortened. If and if they weren't shortened, the very elect would be deceived. Right. And listen, it's not. It's he's talking about this morning. Uh, the days are in length are not being shortened. But listen, he's talking about he's cutting off a amount of days, like uh, uh, 365 days, and he's cutting it down maybe to 75 or what. But the thing of it is, you can see by this, by him having to shorten the, the amount of days, that they're going to have the opportunity to deceive people. Listen, how terrible and how awful it's going to be, because they they're going to be they're going to be backed by the devil. And the, the, the world as a whole is ready. They're right. ready for it. And they're getting readier and they're getting readier and they're getting readier. And so by the time all this takes place, everything will be ready for the hand of Christ to come in and to uh, deceive the people. And listen, uh, the, the only thing I'm looking forward to, and you should be too, is the calling out mm -hmm. and to get away from it. But... Uh, there's going to be some that are going to be here, and uh, they're going to have to stay, go through this tribulation. But I want to read a little bit more here now <clears throat> in this. In this, and look in verse uh, ten <clears throat> or verse nine. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. I believe. I believe here is part of the church what it's going to have to go through because. Uh, the church will have to go through a, a tribulation, not the great tribulation, but a tribulation because uh, there's always persecution of the church. It's always been persecuted and it always will, always will be as long as it is a church and until it's, carried, it's brought out. And so there's a, there's a tribulation for the church. It's not the great tribulation because uh, the great tribulation he speaks of here uh, is that there's never been nothing like it before, and there never will be anything like it again. So right. the Great Tribulation has not taken place yet. But the church this morning is being persecuted, and uh, a lot of people don't understand uh, how it's being persecuted, and it's a it's a uh, it's a under undermining thing. It's a it's a it's something that's going on. And it's it's a it's a mouth to ear thing, and the church is not aware a lot of times of it. But the church needs to be aware of the fact that it's being persecuted, Amen. and that uh, you're being watched. And uh, every day that goes by, they're they're just like they were gathering up to crucify Christ. They're planning. They're making they're making preparations. And so one day it'll be like Judas Iscariot when he went and said, "Hey." I'll do it for you. Mm -hmm. And so they will have all their stuff together. And these things that we're reading here 
uh, that's, that is a greater persecution than we're having right now because it will come out into the open. Right now, they're, they're undermining the church and they're, try, they're trying to get it to the point where that they can close it. And by laws and all of this, they will eventually move us out of a building into a cave or into right. a, a hidden place. And this is where the, the persecutions are going to come. But he says, uh, all of these are the beginning of sorrow. Notice now uh, in verse 10, uh, And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another <clears throat> and shall hate one another. And that don't sound good because the thing of it is, uh, if it's the church and, the, and through persecution, the church gets in this condition, hating one another that's in the church listen that's that's a bad that's a bad that's a bad persecution Amen. because if, you know uh, uh, um, uh, i believe it speaks there of in, in in there about mother uh hating daughter and, and father hating son and all this well listen uh when it comes right down to the to the real rub uh He's saying this that maybe church members and I, I, and I you know, it, it's sad to say, but church member will turn against church member, mm -hmm. and uh, because listen, they're fighting for their life. When when these times comes, uh, every little every little nickel, every little dime, every little morsel of, uh, of food that they get, hey, listen, they're 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 going to be uh, covered by that, and and they're, it's a it's a it's a trying time. And so I, I believe that it, it's going to get a lot worse than it is as far as as uh, uh, the church that has the love because I, I just believe it it'll get worse. But notice he says here uh, and, uh, and in verse 10, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Now, listen, I mentioned this about the church, but <clears throat> in this time, there will not be no need for Satan's followers to betray one another because they've got what they want. Amen. Everything is going smooth for them. And that's the reason why I, I would say this morning that, uh, and, and, and you know, it, it's, it's like a lot of these so-called so churches. Hey, they're going to find out uh, it ain't as good as it is and they are going to betray one another to do what they need to do and of course it'll prove out that they're not really truly uh, uh christ-like right but I, I believe i believe that's what he's trying to say here when he says that many shall be offended and shall betray one another and satan's satan's crew is not going to be offended at uh, at the uh, the world situation and and what's going on because listen everything will be open up to them because they'll be willing to take the mark or or they'll be willing to to serve a false god they'll be willing to do whatever that satan wants them to do so they're not going to be offended but nice he says here and in verse 11 and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And so we see here again that the church is going to take the blunt of this. So, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And this love of many shall wax cold. The, the, the love of the church this morning, the love that's in this church this morning, listen, it don't need to wax no cold. Amen. It don't need to wax no cold. In fact, in business, it needs to be put on the stove and, and warmed up a little bit. Amen. Because, listen, I myself, and I can speak for myself, because I know a lot of the times I don't, re I don't remember to pray for my brother and sister like I should. I don't, I, a lot of times I don't have the, the love in my heart to, to, uh, to look at them like I should and, and to think about what they're going through. And uh, uh, if it gets any worse in me, it's going to be catching in the church, and, and, and it's going to be in the church. Right. And so we we need to we we need to be, re remember this, and because iniquity shall abound, or sin, the love of many shall wax cold. And, and notice, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And I read this, and I thought about this, and I, I and I never really seen it as clean as clear as I have today or in this week. But listen, he's talking this morning about those that are enduring to the end, that enduring will save them. It's not that way. It's those that are saved are going to endure 
this tribulation. They're going to endure this uh, waxing cold. They're going, they're going to ride above that. And so I believe this morning, this enduring, if you endure, you're working. You're, you're, you're fighting against something. And he says here, but he that shall endure to the end. In other words, he that, he that goes through this, he that, that goes through this is, is, is because he gets through this tribulation, because he gets through these, these problems, is because he's saved. Mm -hmm. and, and that should be an assurance to you, and that should be a, <clears throat> a, a great comfort to you. Listen this morning, people. If we're saved, if we're saved, Jesus Christ is on our side. Amen. And listen, the things may get rough and the things may get tough, but listen, he's always there. And you say, well, I'm out of money, I'm out of this. But listen, your father owns a cattle of a thousand people. Amen. And all the gold they're in. And so, hey, don't give up on, on, on the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't give up on God and, 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 and fall back and say, hey, I give up. I'm going to go the other route. It's easier that way. Just keep on keeping on and, and you'll, you'll come out a whole lot better. Uh, and if you have to die, we have to die. That's it. Because we wouldn't push here to live forever anyway. And so that's it. And, and I know that that may not be the way I look at it when I see these things coming on me. But right now I can tell you that it's better to die in that for that than it is to back off and say, well, I'll go this route right. that, that some of these other people are doing. And knowing that they're out of the will of the Lord. And because... Most of the time, when they get that condition, they're they're in a backslidden, surely cold condition. So here <clears throat> again, and and then notice, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall come the end. And of course, he's answering these questions as he as he talks to them. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in the Judah flee into the mountains. And we know these things. This is this is part of this is part of the tribulation that the Jew will have to go through. But he says, let him which is on the housetop not come down. And then in verse 18, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath. For then shall be great tribulation. Now, when you see this, then shall be great tribulation. What we're seeing over here that we've already studied is, is that it is a tribulation for the church. But people, it's not a great tribulation. Amen. Because listen, between these verses over here that I've read and what I'm starting to read now, the rapture took place. Mm -hmm. And this is this is the time. This is the time of the great tribulations. And it, listen, it's for the Jews, and uh, we're going to be gone. Mm -hmm. And so, don't worry about the great tribulation. Don't worry about being with child, or don't worry about uh, these things, things coming up on you. Because listen, if you're saved, people, I just don't believe that. I just believe God's word is true, and I believe what He's saying here is, hey, the church is going to be taken out now. If you want to see a good picture of it, if you want to see a good picture of it, you look over here in Genesis 7 and you read over there about Noah and the ark and, and how that how that Noah built the ark and how that he got all those animals in there and then God was in there and, and if you look in chapter 7 verse 1 there, he's, and, and God said, come on in Noah. And so listen, that's a type of Revelations three or four there where it says come up hither. He's called he's called Noah in and listen, he shut the door. Amen. And then Noah sat in our seven days. You're right. That seven that seven is the tribulation period. That was that's what we're going what we're seeing here now. And and so we see that when it was all over with, God opened the door and said, Come out, Moses. And what had happened? The earth was clean. It's the same way with the end of the tribulation period. Listen, when, when God gets through with this and he burns her all off, listen, this world is going to be clean. And, and God said there, when, uh, when Noah uh, come out he's, and he smelt that, that sweet savor smell, it was clean. And listen, it's going to be the same way after the tribulation period and after 
they are all killed and after all is done and, and the devil is cast into hell, this world will be clean. And listen, he'll smell that sweet savor smell. We'll come back with him and settle down on this earth. And that's that's when the glory begins. Amen. And so he's here. He's saying here, he's warning the Jews. And I guarantee you, if you had a good Jew that could could really tell you this and 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 get back in the Old Testament, he could show you a whole lot of stuff. But listen, he, he's telling them this, and he says, For then shall be great tribulations, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, not ever, shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. And it's not, it's not talking about salvation, because the flesh is not saved. Uh, through salvation. It, it, it's talking about there would be no people alive if these days wasn't shortened. They would, he would destroy the world. And God is not going to let the devil and the Antichrist or those destroy the world. That's his job. Amen. That's what he's going to do. So he says here, I'm going to shorten those days to where that, that, that mankind can't exist on the earth. And when I get ready for it to be destroyed, then I'll come back and destroy it. But I'm going to take the Antichrist and the devil, and I'm going to cast them into hell. Amen. Under the great lake of fire. And so he says, except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And so we, we have to say this morning, we have to say that he's talking about something when he says, no flesh be saved. And we know this morning that the flesh is never saved. Mm -hmm. It's never saved. It will never be saved. Your flesh and my flesh will never be saved. You're right. All in the world is going to be, it's going to die and rot, or it's going to be carried out of here and changed as it goes. You That's the only way that, that the flesh will endure heaven and get to heaven pure. And so those that are those that are lost, they'll rot in the ground, they'll be resurrected and cast into the lake of fire. But here he says, the elect, uh, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. And so this morning, this morning, if anybody has anybody that tried to teach them about that you can be saved and lost and saved again, listen, if you'll look at that, in so much if it, it were possible, if it were possible, even the, the Antichrist, even in him, they, they cannot deceive the elect of Christ. And listen, you were chosen or you... It, you were or you weren't chosen in eternity to be an elect of Christ. Amen. So if you are a, an elect of Christ, and you should know this morning if you've been saved, you should know without a doubt, you should know. And if you are an elect of Christ, then you can't be deceived Amen. by the Antichrist. You can't be deceived because he says it's not possible. It's just not possible. And so that puts the devil back down there in the corner like a little puppy dog. Amen. He can't, he's tied, he can't do nothing. He can't deceive us. And so you can take a sigh of relief and say, hey, if I go through the tribulation period, I'll go through the tribulation period. But listen, I'll not be deceived. Amen. And I, I, and I believe that's what God would have us to understand this morning. So he says, uh, these old false prophets, they're gonna arise and listen, you don't have to turn your TV set on to hear them. You can go over here to any of these uh, so-called churches and you'll, you'll be able to hear them and it don't take you all day to catch it. Because listen, they don't know the truth and they're, they're, not, they're not called of God. Amen. And so here he says in verse 25, he says, Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the, in the secret chamber, chamber, believe it not. 
For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For whithersoever the carcass is, Israel, I believe, is, there will, e there will be eagles be gathered together. And so he's going to have a gathering. Huh? He's going to have a gathering. And he's going to come down and with the sword of his mouth he is going to annihilate all of those people that are coming up against Israel. Amen. And it says in the book of Revelation that the blood will flow down the mount, the valley of that uh, the Jehoshaphat up to the, the bridles of a horse. And if you don't know how, how deep that would be, it will be about that deep of blood mm -hmm. rolling down that valley where that he has killed those millions. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, that's it. And then and then we'll see the new earth and the new heaven. So that's our lesson for this morning. And I hope that uh, it's been an encouragement to you. Uh, uh, you I, I, I tell you what, you can't, uh, there ain't one way to look at that. And that is that God's on the throne. Amen. And that uh, you've got to, you've got to, you should have a better outlook on life this morning than uh and a lot of times we get down in the dump. But listen, this should help you a little bit. This should encourage you a little bit because, listen, things is not all that bloom and bloom with us because we're the, we're the children of God. Amen. Join ours with Jesus uh, forever. So that's, the, that's our lesson for today. Thank you for listening to us. Amen.